this time on the UK Brewery Project, we're back over to Northern Ireland. It's a relatively new brewery, it's Beer Hut Brewing Company. Beer Hut Brewing was founded by brothers-in-law, Andrew Macbridge and Neil Cambers. Now, Andrew had been home brewing for at least five years and his hobby had turned into a passion. And as it so often does, a somehow drunken conversation, he hit upon the idea with his brother-in-law to set up their own brewery. They started brewing in the kitchen using IKEA pots and pans before being kicked out in Jan 2017 from the kitchen and having to buy a flat pack shed or hut from B&Q to put in the garden. And that's where the origins of the name Beer Hut comes from. Their brew size at this stage was around 100 litres they were managing. The shed brewery was based in Kilkul or Kilkil, Kilkil, Kil -Kil, I think it is, in County Down, only a short distance from Atticle where um, White Water Brewing Company, who we covered two weeks ago on the UK Brewery Project, had just recently moved away from. So they had left just as this brewery was setting up. Um, the first beer they brewed was a lager called Psst Drink Me. Um, they selected lager as the style as the only customers they really had at that stage were their mates and they knew it would sell. Um, funnily enough when they actually um, bottled their beer, the first beer that they bottled, you know, 001, um, they actually smashed it while doing the labeling process. Um, so first ever beer off the line never existed. Um, they don't produce that beer um, anymore. In fact, um, I think they only done a few batches of it, but I do have with me um, a Pilsner, uh, this one, yeah, that they currently make. And I think it's close enough for a replacement. So this is check for updates, which is a 4% um, Pilsner. Let's get this out and into a glass and see what it's like. Plenty of carbonation coming off this. I can hear the hissing as it's poured in here. All right, I'm not going to fill up all the way because the head will go absolutely crazy. Good carbonation running up through there. Um, I would say it's obviously clear, but a slight little haze to it. Um, it's perhaps darker in color than you would expect um, from a well, sort of pilsner at this stage, but that's not a bad sign. Uh, just means probably more malt in it. Let's stop the chat in and get in and taste it. It's a clean, sessionable, really enjoyable lager actually. The malt, the malt on that is really, really nice. Well, oh, especially on a warm day, that that's going to go down a treat. That is really nice. The malt just is so balanced. And again, because they've come from the same place as um, white water that I done two weeks ago, they're using, I believe, the same water source. And that is such a smooth drink. I'm really hoping the rest follow that on mouthfeel being so smooth. Um, what I would say is different about Beer Hut that's different to other ones I mentioned before is actually that they built the brewery themselves. And by that I mean they built the mash tun, the fermenting vessels, and even the bottling system, which was just a load of copper piping, you know, welded together and it could fill, I think, 24 bottles at the same time. Um, they were really helped in part with, by the fact that Andrew was a joiner by trade and Neil a plumber. And so they're able to use their skills to help build this brewery. The next beers that they released after their pissed lager um, was um, a Hoy Captain, which was a 7.4% sea salted IPA and Wahey IPA, which was a 5.6% um, single malt 
IPA, but it had six different hops in them. Now, the salted one definitely got people's attention because they were adding salt into beer, which is very rare, I would say, that you get people doing that. Um, at this stage, as I said, they were bottling the beers themselves. They had their own bottling line area and they were choosing to do bottle conditions. Um, alongside this, um, Andrew was creating all the artwork for the labels. And I, I think he's still doing the artwork to this day. So he's the head brewer and the designer for the cans. Um, I would say if you wanna get a good idea of the size of the operation in these early days, you should check out Real Owl Craft Beer's video from November 2017. I'll, I'll put a link down in the description below. But he went to visit the lads to do a collaboration brew called Simcoe Simon. And you get a view of how small it is actually in the area that they're brewing. Um, 2018 was a busy year as they ramped up production and introduced new beers. Um, one of the new beers that year was what I've got here, Citra Ella, which is a 5% pale ale. And I think that's the perfect segue for me to open the can. And I'm just going to decide what glass I want it in. I will put it in a siren glass, but it should be fine. So Citra Ella. Ooh, frothing at the mouth there. Wow, that is very active. It was frothing out since I poured it. Well in date, well in date. Um, I'm just gonna wait for this to go down now. Now we all know I, I do love a good bit of citra, but Ella is also quite an interesting hop. It's a new variety that was developed, I think in the early 2000s in Australia. Um, and it has high levels of hop oil. And the flavors it gives off should be, you can see that this isn't even a nucleated glass. The flavors it gives off um, are gonna be tropical and grapefruit. And I think this will complement the citra perfectly. So I think this is gonna be a very, very tropical hoppy beer. Um, <laughs> Look at that. It's very active. That's all I can say. Nose wise, yeah, a lot of hop oil in that nose. A lot of hop oil coming through. Wow. Um, sadly, I might have to wait a moment for it to actually drop down. Or does this take forever? <laughs> right, so at this stage, the lads were selling beer da beers down at festivals and it was going down a treat, but they decided that they wanted to turn brewing into a full-time activity and not just an after work affair that they were doing at that stage. Um, they ended up moving from their shed to the garage. Uh, they seem to have bought some fermentation vessels to handle the extra volumes, along with converting some old dairy equipment for the mash tun. Um, so the dab hand at you know, turning things that people don't want into brewing equipment. Um, they also at this stage bought a can in line and shifted most of their output into cans. Now let's go and tuck in for this one. Big tropical notes. Not as much on the grapefruit as I was expecting. It's still there on the grapefruit. It seems more tropical than grapefruit and I'm, I'm not complaining about that. I'm definitely not complaining about that at all. Um, you can see I'm gonna try and pour, but even the slowest pour seems to kick up the head on this one. It's a decent beer for me. I do like it. Um, I think that's one they produce quite regularly as well. Um, so. That's a decent one for me. Um, by about 2019, they were actually running out of capacity and space in the garage, and they began a hunt for a new premise. They ended up remaining in uh, Kiel, Kiel um, moving down just towards the harbour area, and they increased their brewing capacity to about 1,000 litres, which would mean 
in can format, that's like 2,200 odd, 440 mil cans that they're producing per batch. Um, so you can see batch size, it's not a, an insignificant number. It's quite a large batch each time. Um, with the new location, they also opened a tap room. Now, as I've discussed before about Northern Ireland's soon to be changing backwards licensing law, they couldn't sell direct customers. The ability to run a tap room though is sort of via a loophole, um, which all of the breweries do. Um, they would find someone with a personal license, uh, so a personal license holder um, of a pub and they would, in, in the UK, it's called temporary event notice. Um, I think in Northern Ireland, it's called occasional notice. And they would use that to set up the tap room, which would permit it to sort of run on a temporary basis for a limited number of days. And I think they, they run it like once a month or something at that stage, because you can only per personal license in the UK, mainland Great Britain actually, or England, Wales, I should say, you can only do 10 i think of these temporary event notices a year not sure about northern ireland how many right um i would say one thing that certainly has helped their growth would be probably the place where i purchased these beers from which is um kwm wines and spirits um they are based in uh kill kill themselves. I'm not going to pronounce that name right. I do apologize. Um, and they are big at selling across Northern Ireland, the Republic, mainland Britain and into Europe. Although that was sort of a, a, a gateway point to get their beer out via that website. Although they have been on some of the subscription box companies. And nowadays they also have wholesale distribution outlets such as eBeer in the UK and they've got other outlets in countries such as Spain, Holland and Denmark. So they are actually getting the exports overseas, which is something they wanted to do. And as most breweries want to do as well, to expand their range, uh, rate, range they're selling to, not range of beers. Uh, <laughs> one, one point um, worth noting, obviously, is that they were still and still are, as far as I'm aware, doing all the work from brewing to canning themselves. And they also um, have an annual homebrew competition where people can send in their homebrew and then they will score and base them on styles. And I, I always feel that's a nice way to do that sort of feedback loop to inspire those that may be thinking about sort of moving from homebrew into commercial brewing. And it's nice to see that they do that. Um, in 2020, they started actually um, their solo series, uh, which we've seen from the likes of other craft breweries such as Polly's and Cloudwater. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these and actually open them. Um, the only caveat that I am going to uh, open this with is, which one? I'll go Strata, is that both of these are actually past their best before. Um, so this is best before December, end of December, both of them are actually uh, 20th December, 15th of December, so middle of December. So this is three months past what they call its best. Um, so it may not be in the best of shape and that's not to be um, taken upon as something wrong with them, they're brewing. It's just it's past its best at that stage. <laughs> Let's get this poured out. It looked like it had a green tinge on the inside of the can there, but that's just my eyes looking at the label. Um, it's certainly darker than the rest. It's still nicely carbonated. This does have a nucleated base. You can imagine if I poured the Citroella one in here, um, how crazy it would have gone. This is actually building up quite a head with that. It's going crazy in the glass. Right, nose. Okay. Right. What one was this? Strata, wasn't it? So Strata, funnily enough, we're, we're sort of expecting tropical, but also like weed skunk sort of element to it. So it's, it's supposed to be very dank. Um, this head's just going to keep growing in this glass. So I'm just going to tuck straight in and try and get some liquid.
Wow. I got quite a bit of liquid. Wow. That's still in its best. That's in, that's still in good shape. Wow. <clears throat> it's so hoppy, the resinous hops in there. That is an amazing one. Wow. 6% as well. That is delicious. Um, I'm hoping that the Idaho 7 has held up just as well as this. This is just beautiful. I mean, all their beers have been good. Ella's been good, but this is just, yeah, move to the side. This is the one to drink. Oh, smells, smells amazing. Tastes even better. Um, at the um, end of 2020, they, alongside, they created this at the beginning of 2020. At the end of 2020, they started a core range of beers, which they hadn't really been doing. They'd just been following, I'd say, that sort of um, cloud water poly method where you're just producing new beers all the time. Uh, but like them, they switched also producing, a, you know, core range of beers, which they put under the title core. Um, these were existing recipes, which they had tweaked a little bit. For example, increasing the dry hop level, um, you know, just fine tuning the beer to make it the sort of sessionable that they would want to sell. Now, I would say the core range, I haven't got any with me, unfortunately here, but they have a very basic, but clean design. So it's a silver can, with like their logo on it. I'm looking for one that's got their logo, not really. Yeah, got their logo badge design and then underneath it, just the beer details clearly laid out. Um, and it, it looks nice. It's very, as I say, simple but clean. Um, in that range, they have um, the core IPA, which came first, and that's a 4.5% IPA. Then they done the core pale ale, which is also four and a half. And then they done the core session IPA, which is 3.9%. Um, other beer wise, uh, you got them producing certain beers as said regularly, um, such as the um, Citra Ella, that, that's one they produce regularly. They also produce the um, Ahoy Captain Sea Salt IPA um, regularly. Uh, they still produce the Simcoe Simon Collab, which was a six and a half cent New England IPA, I believe. And they also um, have a uh, fluffy bunny, a 5% stout. Then you've obviously got their one-offs. So the solo series is an example of this where they're trying different hops. They've done solos for, you know, Strata, Idaho 7, Simcoe, Mosaic, um, and probably Citra. Um, and then, then, there's this beauty. Oh yes, Fluffier Bunny. This is an imperial version of the Fluffy Bunny coming in at 10% ABV. It's an impy marshmallow stout and it sounds delicious, but it isn't for this video. Um, when we come on to awards, sadly, I've not been able to find any. Um, I know it's the case that most awards, they require you to enter your beer into the competition. And it could be that they've been sort of dealing with the growth. They haven't felt the need to enter their beers into any of these competitions. Um, so it's not always, uh, I mean, some of the Cameron Sleever ones, it's a recognition, but as I say, you still have to put yourself forward for it. And I think they're happy with the response they've been getting for the beers. They've done quite a few collabs. And um, I say they've been picked up by some of the um, uh, beer subscription boxes as well, which is definitely good for the business. But that sort of brings us all up to date and through the core beers of um, the Beer Hut Brewing Company. And I am going to enjoy the rest of this one. Absolutely delicious. Take care, everyone.